Hi, I'm Anquanette Crosby and welcome to County Report this week. Here's what's happening around the county. Coming up in the next half hour, the community weighs in on early education programs in the county and back to school safety tips, plus one that could save you a hefty fine. And later, jazz lovers rejoice. The Silver Spring Jazz Fest will soon hit the stage. But first, a huge victory for transit. Construction of the Purple Line officially gets underway. This light rail project will connect Bethesda to New Carrollton. Susan Kennedy was there when the shovels went into the ground and explains what this means for the county. Susan? That's right, it is a big day across the state of Maryland as ground is officially broken for the long-awaited Purple Line. The groundbreaking was the result of the federal government contributing $900 million towards the cost of the project. Montgomery County contributed $120 million of its own. I want to thank Montgomery County and Prince George's County and uh, County Executive Leggett and Baker and their councils for stepping up. Uh, and agreeing to invest $330 million towards this vital project. It's just great to say, thank goodness we're here and we're going to do it and it's going to be, it's going to change lives. Finally, we're going to be able to entice people out of their cars to commute by fast, safe, speedy, efficient, clean, quiet rail. And, you know, it's going to provide a great connection to the Landover uh, Metro station and um, a train station and, and really create a mobility option that has never existed before. If you live in Glenmont or Wheaton, you'll be able to take the red line to Silver Spring and then take the purple line to the University of Maryland. That was never possible before. You work on these things for years and years and years and then Sometimes it happens. <laughs> when it's all said and done, the Purple Line is estimated to create more than 52,000 new jobs in the state of Maryland. It's going to put so many jobs within close reach of affordable housing. I think it's going to be a game changer for our part of the region. Officials say it couldn't have happened if everybody had not participated. Let me acknowledge and thank our governor because the governor made a commitment to me that they were going to support this project. And despite many challenges, he never wavers. Well, it's been a real team effort. Uh, we really have been one team, Maryland. And uh, we worked with our federal partners and our delegation. We worked with the legislature, the local uh, county governments, and uh, the federal government was the last final part. And after the shovels went in the ground, Governor Hogan himself stepped in an excavator and took part in the first official step in breaking ground on the Purple Line. You know what, that's my first time doing it, but uh, I was telling the guys that I might want to come out and help them a little more. It's a stress reliever. That was a lot, a lot better than the day job I normally do. Reporting from Lanham, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. The project is slated to be completed in 2022. Fall has arrived at Montgomery College. Students were welcome to campus as they started their first week of classes. Students eager to start the semester are greeted with a pleasant surprise on their way to class. Montgomery College's president made personal appearances at the college's campuses to personally welcome students to their first week of classes. Good to see you. How you doing? Students who were arriving to their classes were treated to refreshments to get their fall college experience started on a good foot. Their greetings and refreshments were provided by Montgomery College's Student Life, an arm of student services that aims to enrich students' personal experience at MC. We have meetings every Wednesday. We discuss on what should we do to change anything that's a problem to students or, you know, what fun activities can we bring to the campus. New and returning students were provided maps for wayfinding and were introduced to some of the many opportunities that await them outside of the classroom. If you haven't participated in clubs, or the athletics to get involved in intramurals, get involved in a mentoring program. The more involved you are with campus life, the better the outcome of, as a student will be. The college has taken great efforts to help provide the best college experience for all incoming students, including receiving direct input from students. 
We ask students uh, when they first apply what they want from Montgomery College, uh, and I hope we're able to deliver what they want and need. Montgomery College welcomes all to have a great fall semester. Welcome back students, welcome back faculty and staff. Let's have a great year. For County Report This Week, I'm James McLean. The community recently came out to voice their opinions about pre-K and early childhood programs in the county. MCPS TV was there and tells us more about what the future could hold. Talking about what we would like to see as a universal pre-K model. Early childhood programs in Montgomery County Public Schools was the topic of discussion at a community event hosted by Council Member Craig Rice and Superintendent Dr. Jack Smith. So tonight was a great example of community activism and so I wanted to make sure that myself and Dr. Smith reached out to our general populace to say if we were to create a model of universal pre-k early childhood education what should something like that look like our superintendent as well as our school board members are very excited about this conversation as well we all want um, the best for our students and we all believe that that success starts at a very early age i think it's absolutely essential to have full access for every child who needs it and every family who wants it. We absolutely have to get there in our community. The district already offers several pre-kindergarten and Head Start programs, and multiple national studies have shown that high quality early childhood programs yield important benefits, including helping to close the achievement gap. In the public schools, we're really committed also to a mixed delivery system where there are a variety of programs that provide early care and education for our youngest children in our county. And we just see great gains from children who are in these programs. So it's important that we get as many of our families and hopefully all of our families who need it into these types of early childhood programs from birth till they go to kindergarten. Child care providers, parents, teachers, and community leaders express their needs and their ideas on what an expansion of early childhood education could look like. One of the things we've learned is people are extremely passionate uh, about universal pre-K and early childhood education, and everybody we heard tonight uh, agrees that this is something that we need to move forward with as quickly as possible. I do absolutely have hope, and I believe it will be a community solution that involves all the different organizations and individuals who are engaged in early learning across Montgomery County. The start of the new school year for students in Montgomery County is just days away. It's a good time for some back to school safety tips. Joining us is Captain Thomas Didone from the Montgomery County Police Department. Captain? It's that time of the year when school is starting. Traffic patterns are changing. It's going to take longer for you to get to work. So please, please plan more time in your day. And when you're driving around a school zone, it's critically important that you don't drive distracted, you slow down, anticipate the unexpected, and make sure that you're able to get there without endangering some of our youth. Montgomery County Police will be working around the first week of school to ensure that traffic laws are being enforced and that to help people get in and out of school safely. Our safe routes to school will be looking for pedestrians and making sure that they're crossing roadways safely. Our crossing guards will be out diligently looking out for our youth and we're encouraging our parents to help us out in promoting safety. Everybody wants the first week of school to go swimmingly and we appreciate all your help in getting us there. Thank you Captain. Also a reminder that drivers who illegally pass a stop school bus will pay a bigger fine this year. It's now a $250 fine. It's even more if you're stopped by police. The citation will be $570. Coming up on County Report this week, Rockville Police to hold its first outreach program on LGBTQT issues. And later, what are the future plans for Lake Forest Mall? Those stories and more when we come back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Rockville Police is expanding its outreach to diverse segments of our community. They are holding the first LGBTQT Academy. Rockville 11's Kathy Dantzler has more. Rockville prides itself as being an all-inclusive city. Now the Rockville City Police Department is having its first community police academy geared toward the LGBTQ community on Saturday, September 16th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sergeant Jan Selhammer is RCPD's liaison to the LGBTQ community. For about a year, she's been working with the Montgomery County Pride Center and PFLAG to develop this academy. And Sergeant Selhammer feels this type of academy is a crucial part of the department's community engagement. I wanted to find a way to reach out to the LGBTQ community and show them that we are here to help them. And I started doing research and found that there are other agencies throughout the country who have done the LGBTQ Citizens Police Academy, and I thought, that's a great idea. I've really been working hard this past year to expand my outreach to the community and get to know people in the community because I do want to um, get feedback. I want to hear what it is that they would like, that the community would like to see in the, the Citizens Police Academy. What, what they would like to get out of it. And I want to make sure that the topics that we're covering are beneficial for the LGBTQ community. There are 40 spots available and topic suggestions are always welcome. And you can register and send those suggestions directly to Sergeant Selhammer. The email address is right on your screen. Or you can just call 240-314-8978. For County Report This Week, I'm Kathy Dantzler. Last December, a fire broke out at the county's resource recovery facility in Dickerson. Authorities say the cause may have been flammable or combustible material thrown in the trash to be processed. This week on the Aldea Radio Show comes a warning for county residents. They are being asked not to throw away flammable materials that could start a fire in the garbage processing plants. Those are all materials that uh, we don't want to put in the trash, but rather if you need to dispose of them, take them to the transfer station and they have locations there that can accept them and process them safely. For more information about how to properly dispose of these materials, visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash DEP. The revitalization of downtown Wheaton is in full swing. The Mid-County Regional Center will soon be demolished. This means that many of the offices in that building will be relocated. One of those is the Gilchrist Immigrant Resources Center. It will be moving to a temporary site. The address is listed on your screen. Fall classes will be held at all sites. For more information, call 240-777-777. 4940 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash Gilchrist. Lake Forest Mall in Gaithersburg is now under new ownership. The mall was sold to U.S. Bank during a foreclosure auction. The bank paid an estimated $19 million, according to the Washington Business Journal. It's unclear what the U.S. Bank plans to do with the mall, but the mayor of Gaithersburg has some ideas. Well, what I hope is a, a massive whole full-scale uh, redevelopment, and I've been saying this for years. Um, this is a site with tremendous potential. 
and um, and obviously, you know, the, the suburban indoor malls are in trouble nationwide. This this not being an exception to it, um, we could do better. So I'd like to see a redevelopment. I'd like to see, you know, perhaps some mixed use, perhaps a great public amenity. Uh, but there's a hundred something acres here, so there's room to do a lot. The challenge of Lake Forest Mall is that uh, there are actually five property owners. There's the core mall, and then there are four. Um, anchor stores that each own part of the property. And there's so many restrictions that in order for any sort of redevelopment, you need to get all of them in line. We've seen the core mall now sort of change hands, but it doesn't, it's not clear what's gonna happen now. Coming up on County Report this week, expand your circle of friends at a free county picnic celebrating diversity. Plus, mix mingle and make a student's college dreams come true. More about the Hispanic Gala and how you can get tickets. Stay with us. County Report this week will be right back. Silver Spring, Tacoma Park and the surrounding areas are home to one of the fastest growing and most diverse restaurant scenes in the region. Silver Spring Tacoma Park Restaurant Week is a six-day celebration highlighting the variety of delicious fine dining options available in that area. Over 20 participating restaurants will offer diners special two and three course menus. No tickets or special passes are needed, but reservations are highly recommended for the week of this event. Rockville campus of Montgomery College for the 2017 DC South Asian Film Festival. Visit the DCSAFF website for ticket information or the Performing Arts Center website for information and pricing. The All Access Pass includes opening night meet and greet, tickets to the film, access to workshops, closing night gala, and much more. Don't miss this exciting annual event, September 8th through the 10th. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. The new and improved Little Falls Library is now back in business. The ribbon cutting and grand reopening made it official. The Bethesda branch was closed during the makeover. The library refurbishment level of effort initiative, part of the county's capital improvement program, made it all possible. Visitors will be able to check out the cool changes, such as the redesign of the children's area, a new information and circulation desk, new restrooms, carpeting and furniture, plus better Wi-Fi. We started a program called the Refresh Program some years ago. And in that program, we go in not a complete renovation of libraries, but a uh, modernization of libraries that consist of a great deal of money, but not quite the money that you would spend for a complete renovation. And we've been able to do five of them so far. In addition to that, we've been able to build completely new libraries, such as the Silver Spring Library and the Wheaton Library that we're building now. The refresh project cost about $1.1 million. For more information, go to montgomerycountymd.gov slash library. The Hispanic Gala is an event where you can socialize and help send a local student to college. 65 students will be the recipients of the Montgomery County Executive Hispanic Gala Scholarship. Each winner gets a $2,000 scholarship to be used at a Maryland college. The Hispanic Gala has granted over $600,000 in scholarship money since it started in 2013. Tickets are still available for this event. Go to MontgomeryHispanicGala.org to purchase tickets or call 240-277-8072.
If you're concerned about the water quality and what you can do to improve it, then the H2O Summit is an event right up your alley. During the summit, you'll learn about how our daily actions impact local streams and rivers. You will also meet local environmental leaders who are working to make the county a cleaner, greener place to live. So save the date. Saturday, September 16th from 9.30 a.m. until 3 p.m. The summit will be held at the Rockville Senior Center. Water is one of the leading issues that people are concerned with and uh, it's very important for us to advocate for water quality and for all of our watershed groups in the county, which we've seen increases in, um, to advocate for clean water also. The event is free, but make sure you register online. You can find out more information at mygreenmontgomery.org slash H2O Summit. It's a picnic for people of all backgrounds and you're invited. All county residents are welcome to come out and enjoy the annual Friendship Picnic. It's free. It's a relaxing way for people from diverse cultures and faiths to come together. It's a chance to make new friends and discuss ways to build a stronger community. Food, beverages, and entertainment for the entire family will be provided. They do ask that you bring a non-perishable food item for donation to the MANA Food Center. We're asking all of us to come out and make a statement that here in Montgomery County, we are one Montgomery County. It is the Montgomery County way, as our county executive often talks about. So that means then that we share the same space and place and the various faith beliefs and uh, various ways of, of living here in this community. On this particular day, we share that with each other. And so there'll be a lot of great food and a lot of great entertainment, a lot of great fun. Uh, but most of all, there'll be all of us, the great diversity that is Montgomery County, all assembled there at Wheaton Regional Park on September 17th. It's going to be a very special, special friendship picnic. So mark your calendar for September 17th from 1 to 5 p.m. at the Wheaton Regional Park. For more information and to RSVP, visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash human rights. Coming up on County Report this week, kicking off the start of an exciting soccer season for the MC women's team. We'll bring you all the action. And the county is throwing a pooch pool party and your dog is invited. Stay with us. County Report this week. We'll be right back. placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Interested in career success? Get to Montgomery College and we'll get you going. You can earn an associate's degree in only two years. With three campuses, award-winning faculty, and multiple online learning opportunities, Montgomery College will empower you to set your course and succeed. Want to pursue a bachelor's degree? If you start at MC, you can save a third on total tuition costs of a four-year program. Apply today. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. The MC women's soccer team finished fourth in the nation last year. They just opened their 2017 season and there are high hopes for another winning year. MCTV's Michael Brown has all the action. There's a lot of anticipation today as the number four ranked MC Raptors women's soccer team prepares to open the 2017 season against the number 15 ranked 
Rowan College of Gloucester Roadrunners. The Raptors start the season with their youngest team ever, just one returning player from last year. Rowan, by contrast, boasted a much more experienced roster. And they jumped on the young Raptors 15 minutes in to grab the lead and then added another goal 30 minutes in to lead 2-0 at the half. The precious few chances MC had in the first half were each turned back by the Rowan keeper. But MC played a much stronger second half. They controlled pace and had several outstanding attacks. However, the Rowan keeper proved to be the star of the day and stopped them all as the Raptors dropped their opener 3-0. But after the game, Raptors head coach Phil Nana couldn't stop talking about all the good things he saw. I mean, we saw a lot of good. Um, going into this game, we expected it'll be almost like a scrimmage for us. We're still trying to find that team, trying to find the positions that we're looking for. Losing, you know, players in the preseason, you know, kind of put holes in a lot of places. And we knew this game, possibly our next game, and even our third game would be those games, try to see if we can plug players in the right places and see who can play and step up in the stead of those players that are injured. So coming into here, I knew it would be a battle and, and it, it won't be cohesive. It won't be the most ideal game. But I saw a lot of really good things. Um, as much as we would have liked to win, like you said, but I think there's a moral victory in what we saw out here today. And he loved his young team's effort. We knew we had a lot of young players. We were inexperienced, never played at this level. Probably have no idea what a Division Three NJCAA game is like. So I know a lot of them were probably like rattled a bit, but they fought and they fought. I mean, you see how they played today and the experience they got today, the next game will be completely different. So um, yeah, we had a young team, but I think the young team played up to, um, to almost what we would expect from an experienced team. For County Report this week from Montgomery College, I'm Michael Brown. Jazz lovers, get ready. The annual Silver Spring Jazz Festival returns to Veterans Plaza in downtown Silver Spring. As usual, it promises to be another success by featuring well-known jazz artists. Local legend Marcus Johnson will once again take to the stage. This is the 14th year for the festival, and it's still free and open to the public. We've got staff and we've got volunteers who help us uh, put on what is a pretty major event each year. We've got a 40 by 40 foot stage, and it always astonishes me when it goes up because it's, it's big and serious and very um, professional, and, um, and it's been very successful. Play is what I kind of call instrumental R&B. Um, some of the stuff is kind of hip-hop based. Growing up in D.C., you definitely have a go-go influence as well. But mainly you have a straight-ahead jazz influence of soloing and having fun. We have tremendous staff that do a terrific job scouring jazz talent from across the country. And this event is recognized not just regionally but nationally. It's not just Montgomery County residents that come. People circle this on their calendar and come from across the entire region. Live music out on the street, great restaurants. Everybody's doing well tonight because, you know, people are checking out a restaurant maybe they haven't before, before they hear the music. So it's great for the local economy. And arts and entertainment is really part of what makes a community vibrant. And we're trying to show very visibly and publicly how much we love it and, and that you can encounter, you know, live performance right here in Silver Spring. The jazz music comes alive on September 9th from 3 until 10 p.m. For more information, visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash rec. One of the last pool events for the summer is open for our four-legged county residents. The Montgomery County Recreation Department is opening the Wheaton Glenmont Pool. The annual Pooch Pool Party takes place on September 9th and 10th. This is for canine swimmers only and all dogs must be under the control of an adult human. Registration is required and you will need proof of current rabies vaccination. For more information and registration, visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash rec. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Kathy? This is Diamond. She was found as a stray and she really is very, very anxious to get out of here. 
She is sweet. She is definitely in need of a lot of TLC because when she was picked up, she was very skinny and she's just putting on a pound or two. Please give us a call at 240-773-5900 or visit us on the web at montgomerycountymd.gov ASD to find out more about Diamond, our six-year-old little kitty who's really looking for a home. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Thank you for watching.